Do, what do you, do you feel 91? You don't act 91. No, I don't. No, I, I feel as good as I ever did. Yeah. But, you know, Shakespeare said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. He doesn't go on to say what happens when the spirit takes a hike. Yeah. <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. Carl, how, is there a number that you feel? Yes. Uh, ne not until next year after the next year, the next year after that. <laughs> I, have a, I have a deal with Sh George Shapiro. I, was, I said I probably lived in 94 or 5, and he says, I'll take an option for a year. <laughs> Every year gives me an option, and I go one more year. <laughs> contracts. No? I always follow. I, I in contracts. I'm very aware of contracts, and I will uphold the contract. Uh -huh. <laughs> so that keeps you going. Legal issues. By the thing. way, I can't imagine what we're going to say here. Call that trying that, to get to me. Wait a second. <laughs> All right, all right. Wait a you want to just natter away? No, I was going to say. I told I can't, you, Annie, he'll never stop. I can't imagine what we're going to say that wasn't said already. That's all right. Mel, say something. I can't imagine following said. the last thing you did on screen. What was that? Oh, the face. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, the that face. Was wonderful. Oh, those face. Yeah, For some was, reason, I had never that seen That was it. really funny. You know what? <laughs> By the way, really funny. The genesis of that was uh, interesting. I was on the, in the Army, and I was in, on the west, I came on the West Coast on my way to Hawaii, and I went to see Sinatra in a radio show, and he was singing a beautiful song, maybe it was faraway places, and, and a little break came, and it was radio, and he was far, and he had a, a little frog in his throat. He walked away, and <laughs> he did that, and he continued to sing. And I, I thought to myself, you can't, on television, you'd never be able to do that. And then I got the idea that there might have been some radio singers who had, were beautiful in radio, but they had problems with their facial contortions. <laughs> That's how that started. Uh, you've just reminded me, though, of something I have never thought of in 60, 80, I don't know how many years. I'm, I'm, I'm a kid at Emerson College in Boston, and there's a play called High Kickers at the Schubert, Starring Al Jolson and Sophie Tucker. Does, how many people here remember there was an Al Jolson and a Sophie Tucker? Yes. I'm standing in the alley waiting for them. To, I want to get a, a, an autograph. And they're walking out. And as they come close to me, Sophie Tucker goes... <laughs> <laughs> right at the edge of my shoe. <laughs> I never got the order. You still have those shoes? <laughs> Dick, you told me once about the time you met Stan Laurel. Talk about uh, that just a little bit, because that was, and I told you after, that talking to you was like that for me. But oh, yeah. Well, I, I was looking through the Santa Monica phone book for something, and, and it just it said Stan Laurel. I said, it can't be. <laughs> well, I called up, and it was Stan Laurel. And <laughs> he, uh, had seen a, the, he, show, he knew who I was, I, and I said, I, you know, I've stolen a lot from you over the years. He said, yes, I know. <laughs> <laughs> what a sweet man. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, Jerry Seinfeld was talking about getting up grumpy in the morning. Now, I'm one of those people who wakes up, you know, on the right side of the bed. But I realize that's something, that's not a habit you can acquire. Your, your brain chemistry is that. It, it, some people just get up on the wrong side. I get up, and I'm talking, and nobody wants to hear me. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't, you can't change that. No. Do, you, do you wake up? I, I, I wake up closer to Jerry's mood, I think, <laughs> a lot of times. But, Norman, you talk about being present, and I know Jerry meditates. No, I, I wake up and take a leak. Yeah, there you go. That's always good. <laughs> always better to get out of bed to do that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you, you oh, yeah. <laughs> but you, ta you talk about being present, and, and, and is that a key for you, just being in the moment, in the now? Yeah, no, I believe what I said about those two little words. And the fact of my life is it has taken me 94 years, a bunch of months, weeks, days, minutes, to get to the second where I'm doing this. And everybody it took us every split second of everybody's life sitting here just to get to see me pointing at them. <laughs> <laughs>
We're, I mean, on this stage, we're way ahead of those guys. Add up those figures. <laughs> Carl and Mel, the 2,000-year-old wow. man, which we saw several clips of, how did that start? It started because Mel is the funniest human being in the yeah. world. Yeah. And I'll give you, I've said, I've said this before. When I came to work on the show of shows, there were writers in the room, and Mel was there as a friend of Sid Caesar's. He worked for Sid, not for Max Liebman or the show. I think he gave you $35 a week or so. $50, $50 a week for Joe. And I walked in. I didn't know who he was, but he was standing there doing a Jewish pirate. <laughs> and I'll never forget the first words out of his mouth. He says, you know how hard it is to set sail today? He says, you know what they're charging for sailcloth? $3.40 on a yard. I can't afford to pillage and rape anymore. The first words. The following Monday, I came to the office. I had heard We the People speak, a radio show, a television show about current news. And I turned to him, and for no reason, I said, here's a man who's 2,000 year old, and he, I, may I ask you a question, sir? You are 2,000, and Mel, Mel said, I said, do you know Jesus? And he says, thin lad, right? <laughs> he says, uh, He does me better than I do. <laughs> and he said, he wore sandals, walked around with 12 other guys. They always came into my store, never bought anything. I, <laughs> but they were nice boys. I gave them water. That was the first. And then for the next 10 years, I asked, this man who didn't know what the questions were, the funniest brain that exists today is in that head. That's right. <laughs> I like that. And he's I the only one who can do a cat noise. Would you do another one? Wow! <laughs> <laughs> that sounds painful. Well, <laughs> <laughs> how I'll be remembered for that tonight. <laughs> how do you wake up? Do you wake up like Dick or like Jerry or? Uh, you know, it, it depends. If it's a, if it's a, 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 a really, I have the windows open, if it's a really dark day, I simply don't. <laughs> I don't wake up. But if it's a bright, sunny day, I'm up, and uh, the only thing that bothers me is my timing. I used to be incredibly gifted in terms of leaping out of bed and into my slippers. And now I miss them by a mile. <laughs> I miss this, my slippers and it's- By the way, I'd like bathroom to, I'd like to comment cold. on one thing. Mel Brooks has the most beautiful shoes I've ever seen. And you have the worst. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those shoes. The shine yeah. on those shoes. Yeah. Thanks. Well, I have the most money here, except for Norman, I think. <laughs> Yeah, Norman, yeah, by far. Norman, you should dress better. <laughs> Real, I mean, he's, I mean, we, we're all I, I, well off, but I mean. I he's, checked he's, recently. He's, I have 67 more dollars than you. Yeah. <laughs> That's not a lot, yeah. Mel. No, it isn't. No, not really. No, he's, he's so rich. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> it's scary. I, 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 Norman like, always had the best. As a matter of fact, what I'd like to do is, when this is finished, I'd like everybody to come and we'll all go over to my house. Yeah, I want the whole there's audience. enough room for everybody here, believe me. Do, do you ever think, did you ever Tom, think? Tom, what? you're superfluous, really. <laughs> you, know, you know, you don't, you know, it's not incumbent upon you. Everybody here, no, wait. everybody here can, is a self-starter, everybody. No, we can no. get up. We can talk about Jews. We can talk about anything. <laughs> Two Jews got off. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's all right. By the way, don't. don't, don't, don't Mel did. No, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. I'm fine. No, no. I understand what Mel gets. Two words mixed up. Superfluous. He meant superior. Oh, thank he you. He gets Carl. those two words mixed up. I all meant superior. That's all right. I'm good. <laughs> you know? Can I explain where? His reaction that your Norman has more money than anybody comes from. It comes from this. All those years ago, we uh, we had this group called Yennefeld, 
And it was the Reiners and the Brookses and the Dom de Luises. Was he funny? Oh my! And, God. I, and the Gilmore. wittiest, the wittiest writer that ever wrote in our business, Larry, uh, Gelbart. Larry Gelbart. The five couples. We did this for some years, twice a year. I knew the guy who had the houses and invited us to take them anytime. I put it together. Five bedrooms in each of these houses, one at La Costa, one at Palm Springs. And one bedroom was about four inches larger than the <laughs> other bedroom. It was much bigger. And I, I took that bedroom because I put the bloody thing together. He never stopped resenting it. He, All right. he, told, us, he told me at last just a few years ago that this was the term. This By the way, <laughs> there was one thing we did. We, we never <laughs> laughed so much. At breakfast, we laughed so much. We never got up from breakfast. We kept talking and laughing and talking and laughing. And then we, that's where we sang the Yenemveld song for the first time. And I said, this is his star, gentlemen. I said, something like this should be sealed in wax. And I said, we'll do that. If you take your pinky and put it in, where's the nearest wax in your ears? <laughs> so we had our fingers in each other's ears, <laughs> and we sang Yenemveld every, every morning. Oh, <laughs> this is a kind of crazy. Car Are we supposed to be talking about aging? Uh, I, no, we did enough of that, I think. Uh, Carl, when, when you first met Dick and Sheldon Leonard said, we're going to find a better you, did you think he was initially? Well, let me say this. Besides his being the funniest human being, this is the single most funniest. talented man that ever lived. And wait, wait. And I, and you would think you would think that you know. Of course, I know him so well. But this guy named Steve Martin, who I think in his category, he's a genius. He knows so many things about art. He knows everything about everything. He called me one day and he said, "You know who the single most talented man in the world is?" Dick Van Dyke. And I called him, he said, no, he did say, he did say that. He did say that. Sheldon Leonard, who was the producer of the Van Dyke Show, gave me the only acting lesson I ever had. He came to me one night and said, you're talking in a monotone. Make your voice go up and down more. And I did, and everything was fine. <laughs> <laughs> you know, even if you didn't make it go up and down, you still would have been a star. <laughs> A lot of things can't go up and down anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Dom DeLuise was the funniest one in our group, really. He was. He was adorable. He was. He, we'd have breakfast, and he'd say, uh, Mel, please uh, pass the pancakes. Hurry! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, real, out of nowhere. You know. He was just... Uh, I don't like just, to correct him, because he's usually right, but it was... Pass the bread. It was a piece of bread. Pass the bread. Oh, hurry. <laughs> Wasn't such a big correction. <laughs> <laughs> because he may be listening. Oh, right. True, it's true. Did ever, yeah. any of you ever think of, of retiring? Or just say, you know, of, no, just uh, I thought of retiring Carl, but he won't. <laughs> <laughs> he won't. I mean, he's just he's stubborn. You know. Dick, you just went to London and shot uh, the new Mary Poppins movie. The new, yeah, the new Mary Poppins. Yeah. I got to do a dance number on did a you? desk. Yeah, I did a song and dance number. It was, it's, uh, I always thought, well, sequels, you know, traditionally, never as good as the original. But they don't call it that. They call it an homage. Oh, there you Yeah. But I, I, I played the uh, son of the old banker that I played in the first one. And I thought, well, I've grown into the part now. I won't need any makeup or any, you know, stick a mustache You're on. You're kidding. I've become the 2,000-year-old man. <laughs> <laughs> Very easy. Yeah, right. But they, they put a wig on me and a beard on me. And I said, You're making up a 91-year-old man to look like a 91-year-old man. Well, <laughs> yeah, right. <the> point. <laughs> but I did dance, and I did, I did good, yeah. So it's, it's, not, be, it's not Bert. The it's what? It's not Bert no. Later. The guy who stars in Hamilton on Broadway Lin -Manuel is, is Miranda. playing what would be Bert, the, the lamplighter. Okay. He dances well. He's a good dancer too. Lin, you're talking about Lin Manuel? Yeah. 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 Oh, my yeah. God. What a talent. Yeah. And and uh, Emily Blunt is being Mary Poppins. I said the girl on the train is Mary Poppins. <laughs> 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 
But she's she's very, very good. And Meryl Streep's in it, Angela Lansbury. Yeah, right. good, very good cast. How good? It'll be out around Christmas, I guess. Cool. Well, it was asked somewhat facetiously of you, Carl, in, in what we saw, do um, you feel peer pressure? Uh, are, are there people that you look up to? Oh, yes. Anybody who criticizes Trump. Anybody who criticizes Trump. <laughs> My hat's off. By the I, way. By the way, I, can, I cannot go to bed unless I do an anti-Trump. I started many years ago before he was, when he first started thinking about running, yeah. I started tweeting about him. Yeah. And I can't go to bed unless I tweet about him. How do you, you got to feel good today. Special counsel was uh, appointed, Mueller, yeah. former FBI chief. Yes. I, w I was in London for two weeks. People would stop me on the street and say, what the hell is going on over there? <laughs> I'm so scared. He's going all over the world. No, no, you're all wrong. <laughs> you're the all of you one. are wrong. You're wrong. You're the only what one. What the hell would happen to, to late night television without Trump? <laughs> I mean, he's critical to our ratings. He's critical to MSNBC, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah, every television comedy program opens with 10 minutes of anti-Trump talk. Samantha... Well, let's Trump. see among us who does the best Trump. <laughs> you want to start, Dick? I've, not, I've never done him. I, I know he does. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of that. Uh, yeah. uh, good. Alec Baldwin does something oh, yeah. great. Oh, yeah. Right. He's he good. Yeah. Right. You well, ask you who you look up to. Yeah. I look... These... Uh, fellows right here. Me too. Without these two creative giants, I wouldn't even be sitting here today. Oh, that uh, Carl has been my mentor and, and uh, my idol ever since. We the day made I met two him. pictures together. Well, uh, Dick the, and I the, made two pictures Dick together. Dyke Divorce Dyke Americans. It's called the Dick Van great. Dyke Show because we found Dick Van Dyke. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have worked without. <laughs> we couldn't think of a title. <laughs> I, no, uh, really. I th that was interesting, by the way. I must say, when, when Sheldon Lender was the and uh, Dick was, a, he had been on Broadway, and I, uh, we were looking for the title, Head of the Family, was up, and I said, let's call it the Dick Van Dyke Show. I said, there's a guy named Gene Rayburn, they call him the star of a show, he's a talk show. I said, this is a real star. And they said, no, no, but he said, not. I said, if you call it the Dick Van Dyke Show, people will say, who's a Dick Van Dyke? I say, after the first show, they'll know who a Dick Van Dyke is. Rose Marie had that exact question, right? right. You said, what's a Dick Van Dyke? <laughs> <laughs> right, anyway, the Dick Van Dyke Show was, was born because Dick Van Dyke was born. Let me tell, I'm going to tell you a story. <laughs> I mean, this is all nice. But, but, but you know, we're not getting paid. <laughs> I'm going to get on with it so you can have a big laugh and we, we can go with our conscience clear. Okay. Would you like to know what the story is? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Many years ago, Carl was a, was a host of, of um, game shows, but the singular, Tom, no offense, the singular MC of, of game shows was a, was a crew cut guy with thick black horn rim glasses and his name was Bill Cullen and Bill Cullen did he did he did all of them and he was superb and he did a show called I Guest and I was a guest star and Julia Mead was my partner you're gonna like this Norman <laughs> and so we did the show and we got I got you know as you I got a couple of laughs and I was entertaining and he was he was really very very generous he was effusive and Mal you were so funny thank you you made the show blah 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 now he always stood behind a little dais a little lectern and always did his emceeing not like Carl who was all over the place from this little lectern okay so now the announcer, it's finished, the show is cut, it's over, right. And he comes from behind the lectern. I'm not, and I'm not sure what's happening. And he says, Mel, Mel, you were so funny. You were so, so I think 
He's cute. He's doing Jerry Lewis. So I'll do. So I say, Bill, what do you know? How you doing? And Junior Meade is saying, No, no, he's don't. He's crippled. He had polio. He had polio. And I'm saying, Too late. Too late. Anyway, we get to the middle. We get to the middle of stage. He hugs me. He says, You son of a bitch. No one ever had the nerve. <laughs> He was crying. That's the story, right? I, by the way, Carl, I have to ask you, uh, because uh, one thing, uh, you know, he talked about game shows. I remember being on a lot of game shows. I hosted game shows. It's a celebrity game and keep talking. But there was one game show. Uh, we were guests on it, myself. I'm sitting next to the Hedy Lamar and mm -hmm. another person there. And we're asking questions of the, of the uh, guests. And... Uh, and I'm, talk, I'm asking a question. From the corner of my eye, I see she's reaching into her pocketbook for a cigarette. And being the gentleman that I am, I reached and I took a, a lighter, not a lighter, a matchbook, and I lit a match, and I held it here. And I hear this voice say, Carl, what are you going to do? Light my lozenge? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to tell them. Mel's story made me think of another story of a misunderstanding that you told me once, and Barbara Bain is here. Yeah. And do you know the one I'm talking about? I think William Wyler was at your house, or you were at his house, and there was something, a misunderstanding about, you know where I'm going with this, Mel? No. <laughs> no. Keep no. talking. Well, well it, it, uh, there was a, uh, an aroma. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, that was a... One of the most unforgettable evenings of my life. <laughs> no, because we met mm -hmm. uh, my, my agent. We had a mutual agent. I was his client, and so was Paul Renoir. Okay. And he introduced me to Paul Renoir. We went to his house. He, uh, uh, he played, um, he, he, oh my God. He had just gotten the, hit, yeah, no, um, Hitler had burned all of the, uh, the, the films, uh, the, the great film he made. Uh, uh, Was it Grand Illusion? Grand Illusion, okay. yes. <laughs> Hitler is burnt and he just had, somebody, somebody called from, from Germany and said, we found some garbage cans with nitrate film in it. It has your, your name on it. He's please send it, that's, that's probably Grand He had it put together and at, at his house, we saw Grand Illusion. And the next week, we invited him to our house, and I showed him and to laugh, which he liked. And we invited Eva Marie Saint, Barbara Bain. There was another blonde lady there, and Estelle, naturally. And, um, and, and his wife said, you know, poor, uh, Mr. Renoir, uh, Jean can't stay up too late after 11 o'clock. So 1 o'clock in the morning, he was so happy to be talking and chatting. And at one point, we have a, a little bar there where we're all standing around. And at the bathroom, one of the ladies went to the bathroom, and all of a sudden a stench comes from that bathroom. <laughs> like you never, and another lady, nobody says anything. Another lady goes to the bathroom, and another one, and, th and nobody says anything about the stench. And I'm wanting to get everybody, Stella and I wanting everybody out of the house. We finally get them out of the house. I said, my God. And I said, what is that? And I, it smelled terrible in the bathroom. Then I went to the pantry. It smelled even worse there. The following day, I called the, uh, the people who handle these kind of things. They went under the house and found that a cat had died there a couple months ago and was putrefying. Wait a minute. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway, so I said... I said, I sent the, I sent the letter. Do it dying. Do a cat dying. dying. Wait, I sent the letter to all of the people who were there. I said, it was not the man to your left or the lady to your left. It was none of the blonde ladies. It was a dead cat that was under the house. And I got letters from everybody back saying, thank God. We, I th they always thought of someone. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, this is the cat as it dies. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about the part. So to your earlier point, Dick, it, it's all about aging and such. Do, do you have any advice for, for those of us who hope to reach the pinnacles you've reached? Keep moving. Keep moving. That's Absolutely. the title of your book. That's the answer. Well, yeah, I have a book by that name, incidentally. I wanted to call it 
what to do while circling the drain. <laughs> <laughs> the publisher didn't think it was funny. I have to just quickly say I have a thank you. I want to publicly thank you for something because when we did that conversation for your book tour, mm -hmm. my dad had died a couple weeks earlier. And, and uh, you, I mentioned that, and you said the sweetest thing. You said, I'll be your dad. And I thought even my own father would understand how readily I accepted that <laughs> offer. That was uh, outside on the carpet. Somebody said, if they ever rebooted the Dick Van Dyke show, who do you think should play? Rob. And I said, this guy. Yeah. He could do it. Big, wow. This guy is very, very Thank talented. Thank you. Thank you. That makes up for Mel's slide earlier. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said, keep moving. I said, keep typing. Yeah. Uh, I get up in the morning and I have some. And I've got three books coming out. I mean, one is just out now called, uh, and by the way, Mel gives me I just titles. say, eat bran. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, Mel, Mel gives me titles, and I write books. I finished a book called uh, Carl, Carl Reiner, Now You're 94. And I said, what do I do now? He says, too busy to die. <laughs> and I wrote, I just finished the book, Too Busy to Die, which is going out there. And he gave me one more after that. What was it? Oh, yes, he said, uh, 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 alive at night, uh, alive at ninety-five. Yeah, the, the the movies of my life. Oh no, that's a, that's what I'm. How about, how about this? Wasn't this a, a book title at the beginning? What? The book, the the film tonight. Yes. If you're not in the obit, eat, yeah, you eat that. breakfast. Yeah. That was a book. Yes. You are the creator of. Yeah, the there you go. I, I know. I, and you're not getting a penny. <laughs> By the way, this morning <laughs> they never oh, pay. This. They never pay. <laughs> I put, I, I put the pages out. I used the, Look I how used funny it. I was tonight. I don't get a penny. <laughs> the, the old bitch. I, I did that this morning. I do. But another thing I do now, I open the obituaries, and, but I stop to, to read the, the ages, and I said, got you beat, got you, you beat, you beat, got you beat, got you beat. Got you beat. <laughs> Try that. It's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's good. Norman, any, any advice? You know, I'm going to put everything that I know about all of this in a show. Ask me the title. What's, What's the, the title, title of the show, Norman? Guess Who Died? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a show about uh, an elderly uh, retirement village yeah. Yeah. where they're running around in golf carts and sleeping with one another and having a good time, and they're over 70 Not and bad. 80. I and think it would them. work, really. By the way, I, want, I must say one thing. The four of us here... I don't, you're too young. We didn't go to the bathroom after the thing. <laughs> How many here would like to go to the bathroom? Raise your hand. All right. <laughs> well, let's give them an opportunity. I, can, I adore the four of you. Thank you. We so love being with you. Tom, Thanks. you were great. Thanks. Thank you, buddy. <laughs> How about this lineup? Dick Van Dyke, Carl Ryder, Mel Brooks, Norman Lear.